Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, um, welcome to this session. Uh, in this session, uh, we will apply uh, the concepts uh, whatever we learned in the previous sessions about uh, financial crisis. Uh, we apply all that framework to understand the sequence of events in the Great Depression of 1929 and 2007-8 uh, crisis. So especially in particular, we will be looking at uh, this one from an economic angle, what led to what caused this financial crisis uh, and then we will see that again, uh, we will put it in this, apply this sequence of events in our framework. So the first one, the Great Depression of 1929-30 which lasted for uh, one decade um, and this one is considered as one of the mother of all financial crises and importantly our question here is how did a financial crisis unfold during the Great Depression and how it led to worse economic downturn uh, in US history and this event uh, was brought uh, on by the stock market boom in the beginning. In the be beginning there was a uh, stock market that the, in 1928 and 29 uh, there was stock market uh, stock boom, stock market uh, boom in uh, 1928 and 29. The stock prices doubled in the US market in, this, in these years. The Federal Reserve officials viewed the stock market boom as caused by excessive uh, speculations. So in order to curb it, they pursued a tightening of monetary policy to raise uh, interest rates in an effort to limit uh, the rise in stock prices. As we have seen in one of the previous session, uh, when the rate of interest uh, declined, you know that when the rate of interest declined, especially in the, in the session uh, in setting the prices of stocks, uh, we have seen that when the monetary policy reduces the rate of interest, stock prices uh, increases. So when the Federal Reserve, the central bank realized that the stock prices, there is a boom almost double and it is because of speculation, what they did that in order to reduce the stock price because they understood that is a speculation that the stock price is not really reflecting the economic fundamentals, instead it is a speculation, uh, they tried to, uh, they, the tight monetary policy uh, increased the rate of interest and as a result uh, the stock price uh, uh, declined further, there is a decline in stock price uh, later on. So, but the Fed got more than it expected the, for when the stock market crashed in October 1929 by falling by 40 percentage by the end of uh, 1929. Uh, so that means there is a, uh, because of this tight monetary policy, it led to uh, one of the uh, further, the one of the crash, uh, biggest crash uh, in the uh, stock price in the US. Further, in order to add to this, uh, there are something other, some other related aspects also happen in the US. Uh, one of them uh, was that actually there was many defaults on farm uh, mortgages. Uh, in parallel to the stock market crash, a bank panic also uh, emerged in the US. Uh, in especially in the agriculture sector, there was defaults on farm mortgages which led to large loan losses on bank balance sheet uh, in agricultural regions. So it prompted substantial withdrawals uh, from banks and building into a full-fledged panic in November and December of 1930 with the stock market uh, falling sharply. So two things we can see when the stock market fell. Uh, as a result of the tightening monetary policy, the net worth of many firms declined. Uh, they were, uh, they, it affected their ability to repay uh, their loans, that is one. And many banks, uh, they experienced default risk. And in addition, the farm mortgage, uh, there was default on uh, farm mortgage as well. So then by 1933, more than one third of the US, com of US commercial banks had failed. So that means the banking crisis happened uh, by 1933 uh, by one third of the US commercial banks failed. So that means uh, a full-fledged uh, banking crisis uh, erupted. 
So, you can see the stock price in 1929 that means the peak of the stock price then because of the monetary tight monetary policy then you can see that it crash that is huge uh, crash sharp uh, decline in the stock market price. So, as further this led to the this is actually the asset market uh, component that the asset price effect that is the uh, stock market crash. Uh, then as we seen in the uh, figure the diagram that we discussed in the previous session uh, is that that will led to the banking crisis. Continuing decline in uh, stock prices by mid 1932 stock had declined to 10 percentage of their value uh, and there is increase in uncertainty from the unsettled business conditions created by economic contraction uh, which worsened uh, the adverse selection and moral hazard problems uh, in financial markets. A manifestation of the rise in uh, financial friction is that uh, lenders began charging businesses much higher interest rates to protect themselves from credit losses. That means there will be there are only a few lenders in the market and because of the financial friction uh, those who are in the market they started charging high interest rate to protect themselves from credit losses. So, the resulting rise in the credit spread that is the difference between the interest rate on loans to households and businesses and the interest rate on completely safe asset that the uh, US treasury securities uh, that increase. That means that there is increase uh, in credit spread that happened in the US. So, coming to the credit spread, this is the credit spread during the Great Depression that the uncertainty in financial market increased the spread uh, between the corporate bonds and the low risk uh, treasury bonds. So, this is the uh, credit spread that actually increased further and further further uh, during this period. So, you can see that uh, increase in uh, the spread. So, that means uh, it became expensive for the borrowers uh, to borrow uh, because the interest rates for private firms uh, that actually increased. So, you can see that because of this uh, it led to decline in economic activity uh, which that means it further led to debt uh, deflation. That means declining economic activity eventually led to a 25 percentage decline in price level. So, normally we normally expect a moderate uh, inflation, but you can see because of this uh, economy experience a 25 percentage decline in the price level. And we, since it was an un unanticipated one, a huge the huge decline in price triggered a debt deflation uh, in which net worth fell because of the increased burden of indebtedness borne by firms and households. So, the decline uh, in net worth and the resulting increase in adverse selection and moral hazard problems in the credit market led to prolonged economic contraction uh, in which there is sharp decline in GDP and, and unemployment rose to 25 percentage of the labor force. So, here we can see that because of the series of events finally, the financial crisis led to the economic recessions where we can see that the unemployment rose to 25 percentage. So, in uh, after this let us now see apply the framework in understanding uh, 2007 8 financial crisis. About the 2007-2009 crisis what we can see that in 2007 we are going to see that it was uh, mostly a subprime a mortgage uh, crisis then in 2008 uh, it became a financial crisis and in 2009 it became an economic crisis. About the causes of uh, 2007 and 2009, overall there is actually a debate uh, on what caused the 2007 uh, crisis. Uh, however, most of the uh, arguments were in favor of that the financial innovation uh, in the mortgage market is one of the reasons. The financial innovation the that it led to uh, financial uh, that is financial engineering the development of new sophisticated financial instruments uh, led to structured uh, credit products in the financial markets. So, this actually uh, created because of the new products in the market many people are not able to even the investors are not able to properly understand the actual economic fundament, fundamentals behind uh, these financial products uh, then see lots of new products uh, coming in the market. But th that will actually uh, as a, an outcome of financial engineering and 
then actually most of these products uh, didn't truly reflect its economic fundamentals. Uh, in addition, we can we also see that uh, there are so many uh, e-agency problems in the uh, mortgage markets because mortgage mark brokers who originated the mortgage loans often didn't make a strong effort to evaluate uh, whether uh, the borrower could pay off the mortgage since they planned to quickly sell the loans to investors in the form of mortgage-backed securities. So some kind of agency problems happen here. Uh, they couldn't uh, clearly check the default risk, the ability to pay back of the mortgage by the uh, borrower. That also they couldn't uh, look into. In addition, uh, we can also see that there was asymmetric information problems in the market. Credit rating agencies who rate uh, the quality or debt securities in terms of the probability of default uh, were another contributor to the asymmetric information in the financial markets. So we will see that the rating agencies actually advise clients on how to structure complex financial in instruments in the market and at the same time what they also did that uh, while at the same time they were rating these identical products. That means uh, they helped as a the conflict of interest that we have seen in the previous session they advised them to uh, they, they were the consultant for them and they developed their products at the same time they the, they actually rated the same products as well so that is conflict of interest uh, because of the large fee they earn from advising clients on how to structure products and at the same time the income that they are earning from their rating as well so all this led to uh, the financial crisis so in stage one, what we can see that actually the causes of 2007, 8, 9 financial crisis, uh, so mainly it is because uh, the financial innovations emerging in the mortgage market. This actually in the, in the first phase which we have seen that the asset price effect, uh, here actually the asset price effect happened, uh, it was led by sub, subprime uh, mortgage and uh, mortgage backed securities and collateralized debt obligations uh, contributed to the first stage of financial crisis. So what is subprime mortgage means? So subprime mortgage means lending, uh, giving housing loans that the housing loans to high risk otherwise who is normally loans will be given to prime uh, borrowers. but. Uh, subprime borrow borrowers means uh, those in otherwise uh, they are unable to pay back but during because of the financial innovation and some of the economic and political developments in the US system uh, that promoted subprime mortgage. Then because of the financial innovation these mortgages were further developed into new financial products called mortgage backed securities and then the, the, these one further uh, developed into CDOs. So this is the historical development here is that um, uh, increase in liquidity from cash flow surging into the United States happened uh, in 2000 after 2001 when the economy was in near a recession and when the economy bounced back uh, there was increase in liquidity from cash flows. Uh, then as a result the development of subprime mortgage markets fuel housing demand and housing prices. We can see that the housing price because of the increase in demand for housing at the same time more liquidity with the banking system, the housing price market there was a peak in the housing price uh, in 2006 at the end of 2006. Uh, this in again uh, there was an increase in stock market price as well, stock market peak uh, in 2007 8 in the beginning of 2007 and let us see what it led actually what is the historical background so the historical background here is there is residential housing prices boom and burst the boom happened because the subprime mortgage market took off after the recession ended in 2001 so by 2007 it had become over a trillion dollar market the development of subprime mortgage market was encouraged by uh, economists and politicians alike because it led to uh, democratization of uh, credit and helped US raise US home ownership rates uh, to the highest levels in history. From an equity perspective, fairness perspective, uh, everyone supported that means the encouraging that the lending to the subprime customers as well, subprime borrowers as well. That means otherwise they are not eligible. Uh, normal, based on the normal market condition, many people won't be eligible to get uh, loans because of they don't have much collateral. Their high mortgage that in 
default risk is very high. So, but because of the development happened in 2001 after that because there is an increase in uh, liquidity in the market and then as a result uh, there is uh, overall uh, support in favor of uh, increasing uh, the housing ownership. So, the even government involvement was also there in the housing market through uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So, you can see that uh, the, the reason is that actually uh, the Federal Reserve uh, having anticipated a mild recession that began in 2001 uh, reduced federal funds rate 11 times between uh, May 2000 and December 2001. That means it was uh, to 6.5 in 2000 then it became 1.75 percent uh, uh, by the end of 2001. That means a uh, significant decrease in the interest rate in the market, uh, significant decrease uh, in the interest rate enabled banks to extend consumer credit to a lower prime rate. That means interest rate that banks charge to their prime or low risk customers generally 3 percentage above the federal fund rate. Right. And then normally what they did that since the rate of interest declined uh, considerably in the market, uh, they already lent to normally what they lent to the their prime customers, they lent above 3 percentage above the federal funds rate. And still they have more, then also they have more cash with them, liquidity there. So, then they encouraged uh, them, to, it encouraged them to lend even to subprime or high risk customers though at a higher interest rate because market interest rate is very low. So, they even charge a little bit higher interest rate than the prime customers then they extended the loans, the housing loans especially to uh, subprime customers as well. Then actually the US market actually the mortgages and mortgage backed securities this would became a prominent feature in 2006, 5, 6, 7 period. The mortgage means the collateralized loans where the house that borrowers are going to buy act as collateral. And then there was a securitization as well that means a financial innovation or financial engineering uh, that is the securitization is the financial practice of pooling various types of contractual debt such as residential mortgages, uh, commercial mortgages and selling their related cash flow to third party investors as securities. That means generating new financial products uh, out of mortgages, uh, residential mortgages. So, these mortgage backed securities, mortgage backed securities were an attractive investment opportunity for many investors because for them it looks like a very new product, um, a completely new for product. They are not really knowing uh, what are the houses or what are the securities behind it, that uh, collaterals behind it. Instead of they are finding it is a new product and they are offering high expected returns and seemingly uh, less risky and very liquid. That means the what we can see here is that uh, the collateral loan, the mortgage loans are converted into a new product, uh, new financial products and that was often traded uh, in the market. So, banks could make profit uh, from this transaction and then banks also could transfer their risk because uh, the loans payment, uh, the cash flow uh, from these loans uh, will be handed, hand, will be handed into a third party investors, right. It is, is handed into a new for another firms and it will be further sold out to uh, new investors. So, then further this uh, MBS uh, that the mortgage backed securities even if out of them which is the high risk component that means the where the cash flow is low from those MBS mortgage backed securities uh, the high risk one where the cash flow is less that even further. Uh, cat uh, divided into uh, developed into a further product new product product called collateralized uh, debt obligation. So, the cash flow generating from uh, assets are pooled to form new trashes. So, sold to different investors again uh, that also contributed. So, let us uh, see uh, what is this um, collateralized debt obligation how it was developed uh, by seeing this figure. Uh, you will get an idea. We hear what they did that these are all the housing loans, uh, mortgage loans to individual borrowers. Uh, all these uh, were uh, made into a new financial products called pool of mortgage loans uh, because of the financial innovation and this has been rated as triple uh, A that means low default risk that means the flow which is coming from because there are many borrowers who is making no default who suppose uh, these many borrowers are 
um, not making any default. They are pay, repaying their EMI on time, uh, pay, repaying their loan uh, every month uh, on the re, uh, scheduled date. Uh, then that one uh, will be uh, categorized as, because within this, whoever is repaying, that will be categorized as uh, AA. Those who are is owning this one, uh, buying this one, because in the of all this pool, of all this pool, uh, whichever is uh, whoever is making payment, uh, they then they it will be given to uh, this whoever is buying AAA uh, products from this. This is this pool itself, mortgage loans. It is characterized into a different category. That is uh, one product is this, another is this, 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 this like this. So if there, when there is a pool of fund coming. Uh, this will be first given when the the, the, the flow uh, coming it will be first given to these people those who are is owning uh, AAA uh, products for them the rate of interest will be low low rate of interest will be given to them and then if there is uh, no default because here the default risk is high right so the here uh, if they are paying back then these people will be getting but here they will be getting uh, high interest uh, uh, income if they are paying that is the condition here then further what it happened that though among the uh, this group that means who are the high risk uh, trache uh, it was further uh, out of this uh, it was made into for new products called cdos uh, this again see look at here the point again uh, within the mortgage loans who are is that is the high risk uh, this high risk is further uh, characterized into uh, made into a new financial products called cdo this again how further Within that, again, there is uh, highly rated and uh, low rated uh, products, CDOs again. So, here actually you can see that this is even if here the risk will be very, very high, uh, these people, but they will be getting high expected return. But actually, during financial crisis 2007 8, actually, what happened that those who are owned this one CDOs, uh, they did not get back their return, and the banks uh, who so gave these loans began to suffer. So this is the overall uh, another uh, illustration of this one that is the CDOs. This is from the low rated uh, component of the RMBS uh, uh, is transformed into CDOs. Then from this, this is converted into CDOs. Uh, CDOs uh, that the pool, the CDO manager and securities firm uh, pool various assets in an attempt to get a diversification benefits and this one uh, further may, made into triple A, double A uh, kind of products. So that means CDO uh, tranches uh, have been made. So this is the full illustration of this one, uh, the theory of how the financial system created uh, triple A rated asset out of subprime mortgage. Actually this triple A rated that means you know the low default risk right, high quality uh, asset this is this has been generated out of subprime mortgages so in the financial system the triple a rated assets are the most valuable because they are the safer, safest for investors and the easiest to sell and financial institution packaged and repackaged first they packaged into uh, residential mortgage pay securities that is uh, rm residential backed mortgage securities the first they made into like that then they further repackaged it into cdos uh, that is uh, further they did it so repackaged securities built on high risk subprime subprime mortgages to create triple a rated assets the system worked as long as the mortgages will all, all over the country and all of all different characteristics did in default at once all at once that means what we can see that initially there is housing prices boom because of the increased demand for uh, houses you can see that initially there is a mortgage boom in the mortgage boom in the country mortgage boom but uh, that was the boom obviously you know that it has to uh, burst uh, over time. So, in the, in the short run, uh, you can see that there was increase in the stock price. Those whoever been, who bought this house uh, the whole, and also whoever bought these securities, they all started benefiting in the beginning. So, what we can see that people all over the country take out mortgages, uh, financial institutions uh, group hundreds of subprime mortgages into mortgage based securities. That is first stage, first start. Then the securities are grouped into tranches uh, by levels of risk and earning potential for bondholders. Uh, when everybody 
can pay their mortgages in the full in full each each month each group of bonds holders get paid right that is in the initial phase then let us see this is the initial phase of mortgage boom then the mortgage payments are collected by a financial institution and payments distributed to bond holders so higher rated tranches are first paid first uh, when monthly mortgage when monthly mortgage payments are not made uh, payments uh, may not reach holders of uh, lower rated tranches so this is the initial situation so in this case uh, let us look at this figure uh, how uh, things move on further so this this part uh, you can see that uh, this one is uh, residential uh, mortgage payments uh, that means uh, these are the individual borrowers uh, owners of uh, in borrowers of a mortgage mortgage uh, uh, borrowers so we can show here see here is that the, this uh, tranches uh, these has been grouped uh, into a group of borrowers suppose this one is group made into one rmbs group one group uh, another group of borrowers have been grouped into another group another resident mortgage backed securities then this one is made into the another group and then yeah here you can see like that but you see here is a red color that means a uh, default risk is uh, very high here also default risk is very high that means uh, different groups of residential mortgage based on their payment they were made into different uh, rmb rmbs um, uh, in that way different rmbs has been created and then uh, the payments from this one because it has been made into different products that the the payments from this uh, rmbs has been made into different groups uh, that you can see that triple a double a a bb bb minus and unrated like that let us continue this discussion uh, in the next session so because uh, we need some more uh, fact uh, aspects to discuss in this 2007 8 crisis um, we will continue in the continue this discussion uh, in the next session and uh, see you in the next session and thank you